Hi, this is Ryan, and this video is a tutorial for using the exercise MP3s that are available on snarescience.com. A brief overview of this tutorial. Uh, I'm going to start by talking about the benefits of using these exercise MP3s and some of the advantages they offer over using a metronome. Uh, secondly, I'm going to go through how to set up these exercises on your computer or mp3 player to maximize their usefulness and in the third and fourth parts of this tutorial I'm going to show you a couple of different practice modes that you can use these mp3s in okay to show you some of the benefits of using uh, exercise mp3 versus a metronome as an example, I'm just showing a measure of flam drags. Now this is a fairly complicated rudiment. There's a lot of stuff going on. And when you play this with the metronome, which is shown here represented by the green arrows, you're basically giving, given a reference point for every dotted quarter note, or the downbeat of every flam drag. So in this case, the metronome is really good for just giving you an overall sense of the tempo you can check the consistency of your tempo but what it doesn't tell you is the accuracy of the rhythms that you're playing compare that to an exercise mp3 so this is these mp3s are generated with musical notation software and created with virtual drumline and we're basically given a one-to-one -one reference for every single note that we're playing and the benefits of having this reference for every single note are twofold. First of all, you're going to greatly increase your rhythmic accuracy. Or every note is supposed to lie, and you practice with that consistently, you're going to improve your rhythmic accuracy. Secondly, by constantly listening to these MP3s and playing along with them, you're going to greatly improve your listening skills. Now I'm sure most of my audience has played in a drum line before and it should go without saying that listening is paramount. No matter how good your hands are, if you're not good at listening to the other people around you and matching your sound to them, you're not going to get very far. Alright, for all of these examples, I'm going to be using iTunes and a lot of people probably use different software. This is the one I'm most familiar with, so I'm using this as the example. Um, when you get the audio files from snarescience.com, basically you order an exercise. In this case, I'm using the triplet grid exercise. So let's say you were to buy the triplet grid exercise. What you get is a zip file. And when you extract that zip file, you'll find maybe 10 or so MP3s and each mp3 will have the exercise at a different tempo. What we're going to do in iTunes is create a playlist for each exercise. Uh, when you open up iTunes you'll see this little plus sign in the lower left corner and we're going to push that plus sign and create a new playlist. So in this case we're just going to create a new playlist and we're going to name it triplet grid single accent forward or something like that. Uh, next thing we're going to do is open up our folder where we've extracted those mp3 files and we're going to select all those files. If you just go into the folder and push control A on your keyboard that will select all and then you can just click and drag those over to the left column of iTunes where you should see the playlist that you just created. So we're just moving all of those mp3s into that playlist. Next we have just a little bit of housekeeping to do just to keep all of our exercises organized and separate from what other, whatever other music you might have there. Um, we're going to select all the files that we just moved to the playlist. We're in iTunes now. So select all the files, right click, and select Get Info. What we're doing here is basically updating the the tags on these files. 
now you get this multiple item information window and for the artist album and genre fields I'm just gonna enter snare science this will help with organizing the files finally I've, I've had some problems with this just make sure that you sort the column just by pressing the name the column header and make sure the exercises are sorted from slowest tempo to fastest tempo finally if you're going to be using these exercises on uh, on your iPod or whatever just click on the playlist and drag it over to your iPod which should be under devices assuming you have your iPod hooked up to your computer alright the first practice mode I'm going to talk about is the one that I almost always use and it's just a standard single tempo practice mode so this mimics what you would typically do with a metronome let's say you're playing eight on a hand and you start off at 120 beats per minute you play the exercise a few times at that tempo and then maybe crank up the tempo by 10 20 clicks repeat and you keep going until you can't play it any faster so we're going to basically do that same type of thing except using the exercise mp3s so on your iPod you're basically going to press the menu button until you get all the way to the base menu which at the top of your iPod you'll see it just says iPod and then we're going to choose settings at this point you're going to turn the shuffle off and set repeat to one that's so that it repeats that same mp3 with that single tempo over and over then we're going to go back to the iPod menu, select music, playlists, and then choose the exercise that you want to play. On the other hand, if you're going to be playing through your speakers on your computer, maybe using iTunes, again at the lower left part of iTunes is where the shuffle and repeat settings are. So we, we don't want shuffle off, you see it's not highlighted in blue, but we want repeat to be on and you should see a little number one that means it's just going to repeat that one mp3 the last practice mode I will talk about it's a little bit more advanced and it's going to utilize the shuffle feature on the iPod or iTunes and what this will do is it will basically just randomly bounce around from one tempo to another and this is going to be really challenging for a lot of people at first uh, it's still pretty challenging for me as well uh, basically it's going to train your brain to become very efficient at processing the correct time and tempo of the exercise so before each exercise you're given four clicks from the metronome and then you have to start playing and it can be tricky especially if if you're not settled or comfortable with one tempo it's constantly changing you need to be able to very quickly analyze those four clicks from the metronome so, I, so that you attack the exercise correctly at the correct time and with the correct tempo so the settings for this again on the iPod you're gonna go to the base iPod menu and then go to settings and now for shuffle we're gonna set that to songs and repeat we're gonna set that to all what this does when we're in our playlist it's basically going to shuffle between all the mp3s in that playlist so it'll stay on the same exercise it's just going to randomly change the tempo around then we go to iPod select music and playlist and choose the exercise that you want and again if you're using iTunes for instance to, to practice through your computer speakers then you want to set it to shuffle and repeat all or repeat songs as shown in this picture to see an example of both practice modes just go to snarescience.com click on the exercises link uh, select all exercises and then look down the list until you see triplet grid single accent forward and click on the video icon